Intel. Let's get straight to Josh Lifton with all the details. Josh. So, Melissa, Intel is hosting a call right now, and we have the news, and it is significant. Let me bring you some of the headlines here. First and foremost, they are announcing manufacturing expansion plans, beginning, they say, with $20 billion investment to build two new fabs or factories in Arizona. They go on to say that this is going to create 3,000 high-tech jobs, 3,000 construction jobs, and 15,000 long-term jobs. Intel's new uh, CEO, Pat Gelsinger, saying in a statement, we are setting a course for a new era of innovation and product leadership at Intel. He says Intel is the only company with the depth and breadth of software, silicon, and platforms, packaging, and process with at-scale manufacturing customers that can depend on for their next generation innovations. Uh, two more quick bullet points I want to bring you, Melissa. Uh, in this release, they also say that they are reaffirming the company's expectation to continue manufacturing the majority of its products, though, internally. They also give an update here on their 7 nanometer. Um, development, they say in their words, that is progressing well. You also talk about expanded use of third-party foundry capacity. Uh, they say here that their engagement with third-party foundries, they expect that to grow and to include manufacturing for a range of modular tiles and advanced process technologies. But again, the headline here that stands out, this uh, manufacturing expansion plans, $20 billion investment to build these two new factories in Arizona. Certainly, uh, we've heard a lot of talk about this issue in Washington. Lawmakers, it is actually one of those rare issues that seem to have bipartisan support where politicians on both sides of the aisle have stressed the need for greater domestic chip manufacturing, not so much because they think that can alleviate the current chip shortage. They think maybe it could have an effect on future chip shortages. They also clearly think it's a national security issue. They think it reduces reliance on Taiwan, possibly checks Beijing. But again, announcing manufacturing expansion plans, $20 billion investment to build two new factories in Arizona. That Intel call is starting right now. We're going to hop on it and bring you more headlines as they come. Melissa, back to you. It doesn't entirely eliminate or reduce, though, its reliance on outsourcing, Josh. If I caught what you said, they're actually going to increase outsourcing of certain key components. So to that extent, Intel will still be dependent on foreign manufacturers. No, that's true. Remember, um, Pat Gelsinger was clear on this, though, mm -hmm. earlier this year. Remember, he told investors, listen, we're going to likely um, outsource more manufacturing. He said that he emphasized that. I think on this call, one key question investors and certainly analysts had was, what does that manufacturing roadmap actually look like? They were looking for this call for more insight and color about what exactly Gelsinger is talking about there. So we'll hop on that. Hopefully we get that and bring that to you. All right, Josh, thanks. Josh Lipton. We'll check in with Josh a little bit later on. By the way, Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger will be on Squawk on the Street tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll have a lot of questions for him for sure by then. Uh, let's trade this. The stock is up 1.8 percent in the after hours. We have been asking since the end of last year if this is going to be the start of a re-rating of Intel. What we have seen this year, year to date, is that Intel shares are up 27 percent, extending that lead over the SOX by about 2 percent after hours. Guy Adami, what do you think? There are high expectations for Pat Gelsinger as being an executor meaning somebody who will get the job done. So far, is he living up to that? Yes, I think he is. Actually, at least somebody with a vision for the first time in a long time at Intel. I think in terms of, you know, Intel being uniquely positioned, I think Taiwan Semi and AMD might have something to say about that. But I get it. you got to talk the talk, and you got to be excited about your company. The reason I own Intel is this. Data center seems to have bottomed out. And you're believing in the vision, right? And you can say to yourself, listen, at 13 times forward earnings, albeit with no earnings growth, maybe it's worth a shot. If you look, last week the stock traded up to about 67 and a half, 68 or so, which was the exact high we made in February of last year. So you're really playing the breakout above 68. You're playing valuation. And you're playing the belief that they can finally get off the mat. They've had their rear ends handed to them over the last couple of years by AMD and Taiwan Semi. AMD probably has about a three to five year head start with their third gen chips. You're betting that Intel can close the gap above 68. The stock breaks out. Pete, what do you think of this news and what questions would you have on this call that's underway right now? Yeah, I think they're delivering, Mel, and that's that's the real key here because they haven't had vision up at the CEO suite for a while now. And I think this is a, a really big move. They've got design, manufacturing. 
And the idea of that that's what makes them so unique. So many others don't want to do both. And I think that, uh, you know, it's something that's going to give them margins, I think, in the future. Now, it will take some time. They are going to have to absolutely go outside of themselves and, and, and get manufacturing done to be able to start that catch-up process. But I think when you look at the cash they generate, Guy talked about the PE levels being extremely low, and they are. And then you look at the cash that they put out there. This is a company that I think has a, a really good opportunity in front of them, now with the leadership of somebody from within that really does understand all of the missteps. And I think that that was something that was missing in the previous uh, uh, leadership. So I really do like what they're doing here. I think Pat Gelsinger is putting them into a great spot. I own the stock. This makes me even more comfortable hearing what they're talking about doing in terms of how they're going to handle the manufacturing going forward. They obviously can't do it right now, but that is something out into the future. So they are behind, but I think they can start to make up. It might take some years. It might take a year and a half, two years, but I think they can catch up, Mel, and that will be huge for Intel. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.